Let's talk about B12. B12 is such an important vitamin, and if we don't have enough of it, we're going to have changes with our brain, with our peripheral nervous system, and with our vascular system, among many other things, as well as energy. So we're going to have irritability, apathy, sleepiness. It can lead to dementia in the long run. We're gonna, we could have personality changes that could contribute to depression. It's definitely gonna to contribute to weakness in our extremities or abnormal sensations, pain, tingling, numbness, things like that. Uh, clumsiness, tremor, uh, vision changes, damages to the optic nerve. It can contribute to uh, cardiovascular disease and congestive heart failure and deep vein thrombosis or clotting, all kinds of things, shortness of breath, fatigue, all these things can come from low B12. But the problem is that doctors are trained to ch check for it based on anemia. And once we get to the anemia stage, all kinds of other things have gone crazy first. And so there's an amazing book called Could It Be B12? And it really teaches a lot of important principles. Uh, I'll come back to some of those in a second, but let's talk about how we absorb B12 so I can show you some of the ways that this process can go wrong. So let's look at our whiteboard here and we'll get that uh, ring off there. Now, so we have to absorb B12 in our stomach and we have to have enough of an enzyme called pepsin and we have to have enough hydrochloric acid to break down the B12 away from the proteins and start the process in our stomach. So if we don't have enough pepsin or enough HCL in our stomach, we're going to have some digestive issues. Then the parietal cells in our stomach make something, that's the cells that align our stomach and make hydrochloric acid. They also make something called intrinsic factor. And this intrinsic factor is going to help be a, B12 would be absorbed in the small intestine. So once we get down to the small intestine, intrinsic factor latches on to the B12, which allows the B12 to be absorbed. Now the thing is, we want uh, our levels of B12 to be adequate. So for a lot of people, the ranges are 232 for, for lab I use most commonly is 232 to 1245. And, but we really want our ranges to be at least 450. So if we have a low range and we're just in these 260 levels or 300 levels, we very well may have a B12 issue because it's going to affect the nervous system first, far before it causes any anemia or there's other signs. So low range B12 could be a big issue for us. And we've had two patients recently that uh, we tested a little farther. One, we found the autoimmune response first um, and then looked for the low B12 levels. And then another one, we found the low B12 levels and then looked for the autoimmune response. But here's what needs to be tested for the autoimmune response. You have to test these uh, antibodies against the parietal cells in your stomach to see if uh, your immune system is beaten up on the parietal cells or you and you test antibodies against the intrinsic factor to see if your immune system is beaten up on the intrinsic factor. So in both these cases, these patients had low B12 tied in with autoimmunity the immune system beating up on the intrinsic factor that allows B12 to be absorbed. So you can also check this intrinsic factor in uh, labs um, and you just test for antibodies to intrinsic factor and antibodies to the uh, parietal cells. So that helps us tell us if the B12 can be absorbed and if uh, not, we need to keep in mind that this person is showing an autoimmune response and, and treat them accordingly. And we have many, many principles that we teach on that. And we have an autoimmune webinar and tons of videos on that. Tons and tons of videos. So uh, if there's an autoimmune response going on, there's additional things that we can do to help the person. But either way, we're going to have to supplement this person with B12. Now, I like to start with uh, sublingual uh, 
liquids that can be that are liposomal and easily absorbed in the mucous membranes of the mouth to start with uh, and if we can't get the levels up good enough or we don't have enough uh, response out of the nervous system then a person could go to b12 shots i don't like to start with b12 shots because there's three types of or basic types of of B12, you have cyanocobalamin, which is the most common um, form in a B12 shot, and then you have uh, hydroxycobalamin, which I believe B12 shots come also in, and then you have methylcobalamin, which is, I understand, it's quite difficult to get that in a, um, in a B12 shot. You have to jump through a lot of hoops to get that. And a lot of people need methylcobalamin to feel the best for their nervous system and for their immune system. So we'll often start with, with supplementation with a liposomal, that's preserved in fat, uh, form of B12 that uh, people can uh, easily absorb. So that's a little bit about B12. It's a very important vitamin if you're having neurological issues or you're having immune issues or a lot of fatigue and things like that. Make sure you get your B12 levels tested and if they're below that 450 range, get your doc or somebody like myself to do more investigation and see what's really going on there and why your body can absorb B12 and, uh, and get some help with that so that you can have the energy you deserve and you can have a fully functioning nervous system and a card good cardiovascular system and a great immune system and all those things that B12 is important to. So, so make sure if you're having neurological symptoms, you get your B12 tested. And if you're having fatigue, you get your B12 tested. Or if you're having cardiovascular symptoms, you get your B12 tested. And, um, and somebody investigate that real well because it's a very safe vitamin to supplement, a very safe vitamin to take even if you have to do the uh, injections. And uh, it can help you a whole bunch. So follow some of our other autoimmune videos if you know you're autoimmune in this area.